Okay. Um, all right. So this is what we have for this week uh, in terms of news. What's happening out there? It is a particular important week for um, for the euro. Okay. So we've got to just let me get my pen organised. Okay, it starts off tonight, uh, or one o'clock in the morning this evening. Mr. The President, the ECB President, Mr. Draghi, is speaking. Okay, and look, there's a a building of pressure that some type of intervention may be required on the euro. Okay, you'll start to see it around. People are starting to. We are currently sitting at 125 something. Um, and they feel that if we're getting cl the closer we get to the 120 level on the euro USD, uh, the closer we are, that there may be some kind of intervention. Now, who knows? It's all speculation. But all these types of, uh, I guess, hearings that we hear out there in the marketplace, they do affect traders and they do move markets. Okay, so when the market is so sensitive whenever the, the ECB president will speak, like tonight, he can say a couple of words that gets misinterpreted a little bit, the market moves 60, 70 points like in a heartbeat. So these are the movements that we've got to be aware of, that's happening tonight. Okay. The other key things for the Euro is we do have a lot of German uh, data coming out there and uh, where is the rest? We've got the PMI German there as well as the French. Um, and again, towards the end of the week, uh, Mr. Draghi speaks again. So it is a, the one on the spotlight this week would be the Euro USD, also coupled up with all the US data that is coming out throughout the week. As you can see here that I'm highlight, highlighting to you, pretty much puts our Euro USD as the one to watch out the most for this week, closely followed by the GBP again. Okay, now on the fundamental side, there's something else that is occurring. Obviously, everybody knows that the G20 is happening and it's happening in Brisbane, um, in, in, in Australia. Okay, um, there wasn't much that took place drastically over the weekend. Normally when the G20 meets, uh, what can happen is we can get a big gap in uh, if something outrageous is said or, or insinuated. Um, no such thing happened this morning, um, but that is taking place. But the other major concerning news that's out there heavily under focus at the moment is the Japanese yen. And as you all know, the rumours are starting to come out very, very clear uh, at the moment that Mr. Abe is thinking of calling an early election for basically for the purposes of delaying the second instalment of the sales tax that had already been passed through previously, of which the first instalment has already been applied and the second one, which is supposed to be due out in October of next year, they basically, the, the speculation is and the rumours are that they want to delay that. Consequently, what's been happening is the yen has just been weakening further and further, okay? And we've seen record highs uh, with the US yen, the Euro yen and things of that nature. So this is at the moment another aspect of the, the trading Japanese yen that is definitely moving the market, okay? So we, things of, of this nature here that happens there um, is very, very important, particularly this press conference because the speculation was that they, on the 19th, which is this week, they could make an announcement of uh, an election, um, basically to for the purposes of what I've just said. Okay, so keep an eye on that. And there was another one, I actually got caught out in this one last week myself. Mr. Kent uh, came out and basically said the Australian dollar is uh, a little bit too strong and we're not ruling out intervention and instantly the market moved like 60, 70 points. Okay, so at the moment we are trading under very uh, volatile conditions. Okay, this is 
the market as best as I know it from my, I have not seen it this volatile for a good three, four years, but when I first started trading going back eight, nine years ago, this is this was normal and it appears to be coming back, so you just got to get the feel for the market again and you just got to be uh, aware of when things are happening. Okay, if you've constantly got your eye close by to a price or set up SMSs or anything like that, um, you won't really get too caught out. Yes, we're going to get stopped out from trades here and there, um, but as long as you're aware of them. Okay, so this is uh, the week and you can see it's a hot week. If you're trading your USD, uh, keep an eye on anything yen uh, for other reasons and also the GBP USD. Okay, all right, so now let me put all that away. Let's bring up our charts and we'll get started. If you do have any questions about anything that I've just spoken about or anything that you've come across during the week, just type them in and we'll address them as we go. Okay? All right, let us start off with the Aussie dollar this week. Now, last week we were looking at a, a daily chart and we were basically seeing that we were very much ready for like a, a typical kind of breakout trade. Um, now, Essentially, it's the, the the dollar has been rallying against, oh, pretty much against all the fundamentals. Okay, so it, it's it's rallying, but the reasons for it are a little bit uh, unknown. It's a little bit funny. Um, I would definitely have expected it somewhere in there to start to to head back down. It has not. Now, the only relief that came late on Friday, the data that came out of the US was poor data and basically, um, well, actually, that counted against us because the dollar was starting to come back and we got bad data on Friday and basically it shot us up again. So, and that's basically that candle there, okay? So, at one point on Friday, we were all the way down here somewhere starting to do that journey like that, the bad US data came out and the Aussie shot up again. All right, now I still like this as a short, okay, um, I wouldn't get stubborn on it, like if I did go short, I, I wouldn't stay in this trade beyond anywhere up here, okay, which we're talking about 89 40, 50, you know, if we get to that level, well, then I'm happy to walk away from it. However, if I step into a four-hour chart, you'll start to see a, a different picture and it's still, everything still points um, in a downward direction, okay? I'm not prepared to go long on this pair at this stage, um, but on a four-hour chart, I can see that I've got a channel forming, all right? Um, it's, it's a confirmed channel. I've got three touches down the bottom, I've got a number of touches at the top, okay, so I'm very happy that, that is, it meets the criteria, and can anybody see it, can, can everybody see what I'm looking for right now, there's two things that I'm really starting to get interested in this trade as a short, um, anybody help me, what can we see? Okay, Paul says divergence. Anybody else? Alan says that as well. Okay, it's not confirmed as yet, but yes, I can start to see if I'm looking from this top to this top, we're definitely pointing in the upward direction. And if I'm looking from this top to this top, I'm definitely pointing in the downward direction. On top of that, I'm on the boundary of an established channel. And furthermore, I'm coming up to the 88 level, which is a huge round number. Okay, so for me, if I look at this, it's worth a little trade at the 88 to try and, and come off it. It's not a Fibonacci round number combination. I've got no levels. I'll have a quick look right now, um, but from memory I didn't have a level. Um, but what I am looking at is the divergence is not confirmed as yet. I will add that. It's not confirmed as yet, but we are almost there, okay? 
we are getting close to this 88 level, um, somewhere between 88 and about 88.50. So it's, I, I believe that somewhere within that 50 pip range, the divergence will be confirmed and the trade will be ready for a short. Okay, I can't place this uh, trade right now. If I was going to guess it, I could probably throw in an 88.30 sell. Um, but I'm not willing to do that. I need to watch it, okay, for this. But I believe somewhere between 88 and 88.50, I'll get the confirmations. Now, instantly, usually when I say things like that, people ask me, well, why sh don't I go long right now on the trade? Okay, and if you think it's going to go up to 88.30, you might as well take a ride up with it right now. Now, I could be wrong. Okay, and then it could go straight down. But one thing that I do also note is, remember there was a gap on the Aussie dollar? This is the gap over here. I'll just place a circle that was left. That gap has now officially closed. So there's got to be all those people who hung on and traded the gap. And believe me, there are some out there, okay, even though it was a two-week trade. Um, all those people now, after having their hearts in, on the, in their throat, as the expression says, they're all closing out their trades, all right? So there's a lot of people closing out trades based on that reason. As soon as they close out trades, what's happening? They're starting to drive the market back down, okay? Which is a, a self-fulfilling cycle of what we're trying to take advantage of. Does everybody understand what I'm trying to explain while I check the FIB levels? Just let me know. If we're all on the same page. Yes? Okay, fantastic. All right. Um, look, I'm not getting any round number combinations, but the FIB level that is at 88.30, we, we get a FIB level there. Okay, this market may do something like this and then do the bounce down. It could be ready to go right now. I just got to keep watching it. So I'm, it, as soon as I'll get some kind of confirmation down here on the divergence, you will see this, this trade will be ready. At 88, you, you're going to naturally, I, I believe naturally, you're going to get a little bit of a bounce back. I don't know how uh, sorry, pullback. I don't know how far that is. Um, it's just normal because 88 represents the closure of the gap plus a round number. People taking profits, you you should see a little bit of a pullback. Okay, so there may be a little trade for anybody who's a little bit adventurous to take a little trade at 88. Um, and if that trade ha held or holds, that well could be the one that takes us to the other side of the channel. Okay, so that's what I can see, Aussie dollar, uh, the fundamentals, everything going on indicates down. I'm not willing to go long at all, okay? I am just looking to time my entry into this trade right now. So if, for example, you did not want to miss out on this trade, what you could do is you could take half of your trade very close to 88, which we are almost there right now, and take the other half of your trade as a limit and try and take a bite at maybe 88.40, okay, and then you're set. So that will give you an average price. If it doesn't get to 88.40, well, at least you've got half your trade in and so forth, okay? So that's what I can see. Aussie dollar this week, I'm looking for a short, looking to time that entry into that and trying to trade back into the channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a mark on my chart so that I can remember what I've done next time I look at this chart. So what I'm looking for is something of that nature, like that. Okay. We all clear? We all good? Fantastic. All right. Let us carry on. We'll go on to the Euro USD. Okay. Euro USD. Last week, we entered a trade based on two factors. We said we had divergence, and it was confirmed for us because it was this blue, little blue, it's not called a candle, I don't know what it's called, this little blue marker right there was the one that confirmed it for us. 
Okay, so we did have it. And at that time, we had price going down. And on top of that, if I change my template, I also had a fishing strip entry. And I know that a number of you had taken this trade. Now, you've got to remember we're working with a daily chart. Okay, so you have to be patient with this kind of trade. And if you were patient and you took the trade, you would have hit your first target already. Can I get a show of hands who hit their first target of the people that took it? I remember Lois took it, or I think Alan took it. Um, did anybody? Rick took it as well. Okay, Elizabeth. Yep, Andrew. Fantastic. Now, at one point, it could have got into a scary ride, especially on Friday. So, because I think when we saw it, you 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 could actually. I don't remember if we could get the same price or a slightly worse price, but pretty much if if you can see there from this line that I'm just drawing across my chart right now, pretty much throughout the whole week, at some point for it, we were trading below the line and also throughout the whole week at some point we were trading above the line. So it's one of those frustrating trades that it's not really exploding but it hasn't pulled back and stopped you out either, so you just got to grind it out, okay? So if you did manage to do that, basically target one, we picked up, what did we get? About 100, let's call it 100 pips rule. And if you've hit target one, basically now you're going for the second target and um, take the risk off the table bump up your, your stop to your break even point so that if you, you you've got a 100 pip buffer there so that should be okay hopefully and then hopefully what we want to do is we want this one to push up um, you could get another well at the moment it would be 200 pips but let's say it's over here somewhere it could be about another 140 okay so euro USD we are still in a trade, or at least we are half in a trade. Our first half of the trade has hit the target. We've picked up 100 pips, and we are riding the second half of the trade. Let me step into a four-hour chart, and let's see if I can find us something else. Let me just check a couple of things. Just bear with me. I'm just going to change my template. Okay, considering that we are long in the trade, I'm only going to explore long trades. Okay, because um, I don't want to contradict ourselves. Now, bear in mind that this week, EURUSD, we said at the start of the session, is the one that is under the most uh, data-affected week. Okay, with lots and lots of things happening on the Euro front, um, from Germany and also the ECB president speaking two times this week, including tonight, and also lots of US data. Okay, now the the euro has been coming down significantly. It had a little bit of a pullback throughout this period here. Um, it's having a little bounce right now, but I'm only going to explore the long trades because we're in one already. If I step into a four-hour chart, I kind of like what I see. Okay, there's two things that I like. Um, basically. I started to formation of, I'm on a four hour chart by the way, um, with the formation of a converging triangle and with a big solid candle breaking through this one here and closing above and also that candle taking out all those highs. Okay, so that is a very, very nice reason to want to stay in the trade so essentially now forget about the fishing strip okay if I'm on a four hour chart based off this I still like this trade 
to about that level there. Okay, that level there puts me at about 126.60. Okay, I'm just running that straight off my eye. Okay, so I'm comfortable. I'm happy to stay in this trade. Um, what may happen, because the journey is never just straight up, all right, what may happen is we may meander our way towards it, okay, um, and if that happens, well then it's all about being patient, okay, so for this week for the EURUSD, um, pretty much I'm going to hang on to what we, we started last week, we're halfway there, worst case scenario is we get stopped out for zero gain on the second half of the trade, but we still made 100 pips on the first half of the trade. Okay, are we all clear with that? Are we all happy with that analogy? And believe me, because of so much data that's coming out on, on this particular pair this week, that data could help us and we could shoot us straight through to our second target. Okay, just as quickly as it can stop us out, but at least we've taken something off the table. All right, okay, so everybody's on board. We're all good. Fantastic. All right, so that's the Euro USD for this week. So we still got good solid reasons to stay in this trade. Let's have a look at the next pair. The next pair is the GBP USD. Okay, let's have a look. I've got something marked on my chart right there. I've got a Fib round number combination. Now the GBP has just been falling and falling and falling. We did have pending orders that are way out of the, the market, so they basically didn't even come into play. I do have one. I don't know if everybody can see it right there, but basically I'm on a daily chart. If I start from this high, okay, all the way down to the current low, and then shoot up to this level here, this is the 38, two meeting a half round number, which is one, five, nine, fifty. Okay, so not my favorite combination, but it's all that I have right now. Now, some t from what I've shown you before, um, some of you might be asking why I'm not taking this high up there. Uh, the reality is I could take this high up there, but remember what I was trying to explain when you this section here, this pullback is a significant pullback, so it's a, it's a big distance, so therefore I'm happy to take that one up there, and I am working off a daily chart. If I step into a four-hour chart, this, this this becomes much, much more obvious, okay? So we, we can put in a sell at 159.50. Let me see if I can find anything else. How far are we off the money there? 57.25, so we're 225 pips away from that. Let me just see if I can see something else. I'll just put it on hold for a moment. There's a little bit of confluence at that 159.50, which I like. Does everybody know what I mean? Who doesn't? Who does not know what confluence means? Just type in anything, and I'll explain it. Okay, for the ones that don't know, basically. I've got right, what I'm going to do right now is I'm drawing, I'm on a four hour chart and I'm drawing a Fibonacci from up there all the way to this low, okay? What I'm also going to do is I'm going to grab another set of Fibonacci lines and I'm going to draw it from that high all the way down 
to the same low again. And what I'm interested in is if there is an area where we get fib levels repeating almost at the same level. Okay, so let's do it. So let me grab the second Fibonacci lines. I'll put it from up there and I'll draw it to down here. And you can see areas where there's what we call confluence. Okay, so areas like over here, see there's the two lines are very, very close to each other. Over here, over here. Okay, so now what level is this? Give me one second, I just want to check. Now the grayed out level is also a half round number. So it's it's at a point that is of more interest to us. And this one up here, what's that? So it's getting a bit far away. Okay, just a little bit far away, but it's also a half round number. So the area that I pointed out, which is this grey area here where we originally wanted to place the trade based on the first set of Fibonacci um, extensions that I drew is from up there all the way to down here, that was the level that we were interested. And then when I drew another set from there to there, I realized that there is a little bit of confluence in that area. Confluence just simply makes it much a much better turning point. That's what it is. Okay? So the probability that the market gets to here and bounces back is higher when there is confluence. And on top of that, there's other things as well that I can just see now that I'm looking at it. I'll show you. Let me just get rid of this second set. Also, that level that I've pointed out, you can see there was resistance there, okay? And then there was, uh, sorry, there was support first over here at that level, and then it turned into resistance. So it could still be resistive and bounce back, okay? So that's, that's all I mean by that. Does everybody understand that? All of this would be classified as, I guess, pattern trading. It's not a strategy. It's nothing like that. It's just fundamentals of technical analysis looking at your charts, okay? So I'm going to place an order on this right now. I don't know if we're going to get triggered, but it's a big news week, so the market may get to us. So let's go for it. So I'm going to put in a sell. At 59.50. No. Oh, let's give it Let's give it 20, so let's go 59, 70 as a stop, and 59, 10 as my target. And let's place it. There it is, and it looks correct. We're all clear, so what we want to happen is we want the market to go up, touch that green line, and then bounce back down. Okay? I'll just have a quick look in a... Oh, that is a small time frame. Yeah, that's all I can see, GBP, USD at the moment. All right, let us move on. Now, I've got a problem on my gold chart. I just want to see if they fixed it for me. They have not, so I can't look at gold right now so I have to skip it um, if anybody wants me to look at something else type it in and I'll see if I can squeeze it in at the end um, but I've just got an issue right now with my gold chart so I can't it's it's got a big spike in it so it's irrelevant to my analysis okay all right US yen last week US yen we said there is absolutely no way that I want to go short I made that message very, very clear. We had drawn Fibonacci's from here. Last week the high was there, okay? And the market was on the way down, 
and we were talking about trying to find a good entry point um, and incidentally the market didn't come down low enough to give us entries and it shot up and made newer highs. Okay, this week I'm pretty much repeating the same message. I'm still not ready to go short anything against the yen, at least until all the speculation about um, the, any re-elections or, or delays of the sales tax, uh, until that sort of comes out, then I'm not ready to take a short. Yes, I do understand that there could be a great opportunity. The market's moved, you know, about 1,100, nearly 1,200 pips in one direction. And the natural feeling is that it's going to have some kind of a, a bounce back. Okay. The only issue is if you trade to short, okay, and having a leveraged account, the problem is you could have had this feeling when we were 500 pips, okay, and then it's gone a further 500. Now, is it going to go a further 100, another 70, another 200? I don't know, all right? So for the just to speculate, I'm not willing to do that. So I want that issue to be resolved. It'll paint a clearer picture and it'll put the technicals back into place. Having said that, there is a long opportunity. It's way out of the money again. We did have one last week. I didn't place it because it was just so far away. There is another one. It's at 112.50, okay? So essentially, if I take the low to the current high, which is a high from today's candle, um, and then come back down to the 38.2, it sits at 112.50, okay? It's 400 pips away, this trade. Oh, no, hang on a sec, 300 pips away at the moment. So it's very, very far away. Look, I'm going to place it, 300, we, it may come into play, um, and it is a long, all right? So let me just put it in. Okay, 112, let's put a 20 stop on it, so that'll make it 30. And we'll do a 20-40, so make it 90. 112.90, let's place it. And there it is, it looks right to me. Any questions on the US Yen? I'm just going to have a quick look on a smaller time frame. There's nothing there, nothing at all. So I'm I'm just waiting for a pullback to see if I can get an entry on it. Um, otherwise, we'll just watch on the US yen. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the euro yen. Similar story. With the Euro Yen, last week, I think the high was over here, and then it went up a further 220 pips, okay? Um, a few of you traded a couple of the things that, that I said off the Euro Yen. I got some emails. I think Greg was one. Might have been Alan. I can't remember. Um, we did get stopped out on something last week on a 2040 trade, stopped out by one pip. Um, oh, it's the New Zealand dollar from memory. But the Euro Yen w was a good trade. We got that one out, so that was all right. The Euro US did okay for us. Um, this week for the Euro Yen, I don't really have a FIB round number combination. The only thing I do have on a four hour chart, which is still not confirmed for me properly yet, um, but I can see a bit of divergence happening. Okay, so you can see straight from my chart. Um, I am looking for a turning point. The only issue right now to trade the Euro Yen, remember the Euro is coming under a lot of fire this week and the Yen is coming under a lot of speculation. 
Okay, so just be careful if you trade the Euro Yen, just be gentle with it. Um, and there could be a potential for a good short. Like I said, just for the U US Yen, the same applies for the Euro Yen. Um, it has moved, let's, let's count it, let's, let's spell it out. The movement is 1,240 pips, okay, in not a very long period of time. And that's from the 16th of October. So in one month, in one month, it has moved 1,200 pips, all right? And largely on the back of the announcement that, the, that Japan was going to do some type of uh, Q, incorporate some type of QE program, quantitative easing. Now, there is an opportunity. You feel that this is definitely going to have a breather. It's going to bounce back. Um, with the U US yen, one of the other things that I forgot to mention is the pullback that we have having this morning, um, the speculation is from the, the news wire feeds that I received, Dow Jones feeds, um, it's a lot of profit makers. Okay, so basically people that have been in this trade for a long time who are now saying, okay, there's, there's a lot on the line here, let's clear and release and, and take that profit that we've made. And basically, so a lot of the sellers that have come into the market are not new sellers, they're just the existing people that are selling off and making profit. There is a major difference when it is people in profit that are selling off compared to new people jumping in short. The major difference is this. When those people that sell off their profit, it still has the same effect. It can pull the market back. But when it pulls it back and they like the levels again, so basically, let's say all these people that made profit, they sell and the market pulls back a little bit, okay? What they do is they already liked it as a long, they basically jump back in and they continue to drive it back up, okay? So there's a difference with people who think it's going to go down who are brand new sellers into the market compared to people who have been long from all the way down here, made a profit, sell, and it, it comes down, they buy again, okay? So it has a rolling effect, a much, much stronger momentum moving forward, all right? So we need to wait and find out to see what Mr. Abe says and what's going to happen with this retail tax, and then we should be able to see some opportunities, okay? But on the four-hour chart, you can see that technically, the opportunity is starting to show itself. Okay, so if you want to take it, it's nearly there. I think we're probably one candle away and then it can open up that door down. Any questions on the Euro Yen? No, we're all good. Everybody's still awake? Yep. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. Let's move on. Kiwi dollar. All right. Kiwi dollar. Kiwi dollar burnt me last week. Um, we got stopped out by one pip. I can't remember the trade. It was a short, uh, a 78 short or something like that. And we got stopped out at 79.21 or something something ridiculous and then it went straight to the target. Very annoying, okay, doesn't matter. We, uh, we have to move on. One thing, the Kiwi dollar has left a gap this morning, okay, so there it is. There is a little gap that's still not being closed and the market is now driving forward, okay. So let's... Uh, have a quick look on a daily chart. Let's see what we can see. From a daily point of view, uh, this chart is starting to show, offer a little bit of confusion. Okay, I'm not willing, right now where it sits, I can't see a clear direction in, in, in either way. And, and the reason for that is, 
if I was going to be short, and now I want to be short, but the closer I get to this top, to this top level here, and if this breaks it in this direction, well now I've got a market that made a lower low and a higher high, okay? Now, if I really was hoping that this top level was going to hold, then you could attempt to take shorts here, placing your stops just above that level. So then this kind of a double top kind of thing may hold. That's the other option. Um, it's not, a, I mean, it's with the momentum. The only thing is it's pulled back so much. All right, normally when uh, your classic patterns, when they do this, they pull back a little bit and continue on. So this pullback right now, we're up here, okay? So we usually when it gets that high up, it has a higher probability to fail and just continue in this direction, all right? So the pattern, last week we were over here, okay, which was sitting nicer. This week we're up here, which makes it a little bit trickier. Okay, so on my daily chart, I'm confused. I don't want to touch it. Let me step into a smaller time frame. Let's see if we can see something there. The smaller time frame, the gap is the, the most obvious thing. But that's about it. There was a, oh, hang on a second. Let me just have a look at something. I'm sitting on a fib level right now. A 79.50. How high did this candle go? Would if I had taken that, would I have been stopped out? This the height of this candle is seventy nine seventy four plus the spread is about say one point eight. So Okay, uh, it, I wouldn't really trade it now. However, if we had seen this on a four-hour chart, does everybody see the trade that I'm looking at? Let me get rid of that. Uh, Rav is asking why is there a gap okay now the gap in the market a gap in the market this is just in general um, in Forex trading gapping is not as common as in equity equity trading now it usually happens more so over a weekend okay and and basically this one here, I would bet, would be basically on the basis of um, there was a G20 meeting on, on the weekend. So there could have been, uh, if, if this is gapping upwards, basically it means that the New Zealand dollar is getting stronger against the US dollar. So something that would have been said over the weekend has affected the market and the market has interpreted it as, oh, okay, the Kiwi economy is getting a bit better or the US economy uh, is getting a little bit worse or the dollar's a little bit over uh, overvalued or, or, or things of that nature. So the gap in basically is an indication when the market has closed and new information has come to life and basically when the market has reopened, the market has interpreted that information as such and the first traded prices for the session were higher than the last traded prices for the last session. Okay, so that's why a gap usually occurs. Okay, um, if you think about it, about simple supply and demand, Think of this example, let's just say that I'm selling, now I've got a pen in my hand, so let's say I'm selling these pens that are in my hand right now for one dollar, okay, so everybody follow me, I'm selling them for one dollar, okay, now I can see there's about 50 people in the room right now, and now everybody just type in how much you want to buy it off me, just type in a number, everybody just type in a number and I'll just call some numbers out, I'm selling for one dollar, 
So somebody wants to buy it for $10. Okay, that's it. I've already got my answer right now. Okay, so if somebody wants to buy it for $10, it's it's fantastic for me to sell it for him, to him $10. It's, it's only worth one right now, but someone says, I'll buy it off you for 10 So I sell it to that person for 10 and now the price on the chart jumps from one to 10 and leaves a big gap. Okay, that's what gapping is. Did that make sense to everybody? Okay, that that is exactly what gapping is. All right, so it's the last traded price compared to the most recent traded price is there is a gap. There's a difference, and it simply comes back to supply and demand. Okay, all right. So so that's that gap still there. Um, all right. If I had seen this, uh, there is a Fib 78.6 combination at 79.50. All right. In theory, in theory, this top you still have not been stopped out of this trade. So if you wanted to trade it, you could still place your stop at 79.70. Okay. So it's going to cost you 14 pips, and try and trade it down to 79.10 which would be exactly closing off the gap. There you go. Who likes it? Does anyone who take it? I just don't know if it's going to hold. There's just so much momentum. That's it. I don't like taking the trade when it's already gone so deep towards my stop. Okay? So, no, I'm not going to take it, but if anybody wants to take it, go for it. All right? Other than that, Kiwi Dollar, have we found anything else? Let me have another quick look. Okay, similar story to the Aussie dollar, and they correlate with each other quite a lot, so it doesn't surprise. There is a channel there, okay, so we could we can try and figure out the behavior. Now that I see the channel, I don't mind that trade that I called out as much. I actually, I like it. I like it a little bit more now. Um, if anything, I probably want to place my stop above this high here, which that high is 79.77. So if you took a, a 20.40 right now, your stop would be at 79.83, okay? And then what you're really trying to do is trade the channel. So you'd be trying to trade down straight away. Your stop's going to be 79.80 something, which is about there somewhere. And your target for 40 okay so if anybody wants that there you go it's there right now okay all right that's all on the Kiwi dollar last one euro Aussie euro Aussie Not much happening on the Euro Aussie. Let me have a quick look on a daily. Oh, four hours. There's a level at 144.50. I think we got stopped out on a Euro Aussie trade as well. Can anybody confirm that for me? Or did I imagine that? Did we get stopped out stopped out on a Euro Aussie trade? Yes, we did. Okay. So our two 2040s got stopped out last week, so we lost 40 pips on that. Our... Euro yen trade did okay, and our Euro USD trade did okay. All right, so there is a a sell at one forty four fifty. 
here. It's a 61.8 combination with 140 with a, a half round number. So there's a sell there. Um, it really does, to be honest, it looks to me more likely that this is going to do this, come, test it, test it for the third time and come down. But that would be in contradiction to the Aussie US coming down as well. So this may hold. I don't know. But this chart, looking at this chart, uh, basically right now I don't want to trade either direction. I'd be interested to see what happens here. And if this now just turns around and starts going there, I'm interested in selling off there. Okay. Paul saying blue candle to confirm double bottom. Um, I don't see that, Paul. There's a double bottom there, okay, already on a four hour chart. And now this is looks like it wants to come back and test it. Okay, um, so Euro Aussie, we can put in a sell at 144.50. Let's do that. That's valid. Let's go sell 144.50 and we'll go 144.70 is my stop and my target will be 144.10 so 40.20 and let's place it and there it is okay now remember if we make a lower low we got to go back and cancel that out. Any questions on that one there, guys? No, we're all clear. Okay, let's let's summarize what we've done for the week. Does anybody want me to have a look at anything? Type it in and I'll have a look. We've got a sell GBP USD at 159.50. We have a buy USEN 112.50 and we have a sell Euro Aussie at 144.50. All three trades are 2040s, meaning 20 point stops, 40 point targets. Okay, we're still holding a Euro USD for our second target and we are monitoring the Aussie closely on this channel. And for the aggressive ones out there, you should be in a short on the Kiwi dollar um, right about now if you wanted to take that trade. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions, anything that you want me to look at before we call it a day? No? We're all good? Fantastic. All right. Uh, we'll call it a, a session. We've got the three trades and all those things that we looked at. We will see you, I'll see you all on Thursday and we'll cover another strategy and um, I'll see if we can, um, I'll try and squeeze in a, a London session. The problem for me right now is that it's at 7pm so it's a bit of an awkward time but I'll, I'll try and, and do a session. I will notify you via Twitter so that if I'm there ready and available to trade it, I'll just send out a message trading live and then just jump into the chat room and you can basically yeah, see me do it live. Okay, other than that, have a great afternoon. Keep an eye on those announcements and uh, I will see you all on Thursday. Bye for now, guys.